All right, welcome back here to The Hill on News Nation as President Biden hits the road today. Again, live pictures there in Michigan. The pressure on him to withdraw is not letting up. A key constituency of support for the president up until this point is Democratic governors who met with him last week as the calls continued. Now, one of the governors that is uh, in that session was Hawaii's Josh Green. And Governor Green joins us live here on The Hill. Governor, it is, it is great to speak with you. Thanks for being with us here on The Hill. Um, I, you know, I want to start with this press conference last night from the president, because obviously you watched it, I watched it. There were all these questions about his age and about his travel. For those who don't know, you are a physician by trade. Uh, you yes. were named twice the uh, physician of the year in your home state, so you know a thing or two about this. I want to play for you some comments that the president said, and, and I'll ask your, your reaction on the other side. Well, I just got to just pace myself a little more. Pace myself. In the next debate, I'm not going to be traveling in the 15 time zones a week before. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that's what it was about. Says he's got to pace himself and won't be traveling a lot. Do you agree with that self-diagnosis? Uh, that was definitely part of it. The president was exhausted. There's no question. He did not do well in that debate. None of us deny that, including uh, the president and the first lady. Uh, but he did do much better when he was explaining foreign policy to the rest of the nation. He was quite sharp. Look, an 81-year-old gentleman is going to have moments where they skip a word, where they feel exhausted. That was the case when we had Ronald Reagan as president. And he went on to two terms that are viewed as very successful by many, uh, particularly the Republican Party. So there are a lot of things that happen to an older person. And sometimes it's tough. And I will tell you, you're going to see bad days on, on the part of former President Trump also. These two gentlemen are old. Is that a surprise? No. It doesn't take a physician to tell you that. But what I can right. tell you is that cognitively, he is quite able uh, to put major complex policies together. So here's here's what I can't here's what I can't wrap my head around, and and maybe you can help me, Governor. And this has yes. nothing to do with party identity, person, et cetera. But you heard the president there say that he basically needs to dial his travel back before a major event. In this case, the debate. How can the commander in chief, Governor, say? I can best represent this country, but if something big happens, I need to stop traveling. That's part of the job, is it not? Uh, it is, but, you know, the 90-minute interview process or debate process requires kind of rapid-fire, high-intensity challenges, and that's what he was experiencing. It, it is definitely something that he's trying to say uh, deliberately. He doesn't want to spend energy if he's going to be judged in this political and partisan way. He also wants to be clear. He has a team around him that has done an extraordinary job. And frankly, that's really what the Office of the Presidency is. None of these guys go 24 hours a day. You know, I was on call. I used to stay up for those kind of shifts. Do you and that trust was not his healthy. team right now, Governor? Because it seems like he's fairly isolated and insulated. His team is extraordinary. His team delivered three and a half years of great work. And, you know, I got to see him firsthand because we had the Maui wildfire uh, just yeah. under a year ago. He walked, you know, he walked the disaster zone with us. He greeted 300 people. This is very common. Teams, of course, they protect their principal. Uh, they do that for Mr. Trump. They do that for Biden. They've always done that for every president. You know, Ronald Reagan in his last two years was completely surrounded by his inner circle and mostly Nancy Reagan. And everyone felt that he actually had severe decline then, but he was still our president. It, it's a complex question, but really it comes down to two people in this case, Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump. If you look under the hood of each, you see different things. Perhaps some fatigue on President Biden's part and a pathologic personality, unfortunately, on Mr. Trump's part. And that's really what is quite scary to people. That's why this election is extremely close still. A lot of the polls are within two percentage points. And women are nervous about Mr. Trump coming back into office. And I think personally, that's why the polls are, are not wide like they might be after a bad debate. Thank you for watching and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.